Recently, I flew with Finnair and was really surprised by this European Airlines. However, was it in a good or bad way? Should you avoid all flights in their long haul? And most importantly, can it compete with other Asian and Middle Eastern Airlines? Watch the full flight review to the end to find out. Hey guys, and I'm at Finland Airport. I'm going to fly on the H50 for 12 hours. Now, if you like this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon and turn your notifications on so you are alerted of new videos. Helsinki's International Airport is one of my favourite airports. It was clean, neat and simple. There were plenty of food options and a really cool bar concept on the upper deck. However, in public lounges, there was a lack of USB ports and power outlets. Overall though, it's still an excellent terminal to transfer through. As we climbed above the clouds, we catch a glimpse of the moon. This is why I love window seats and will always go for a window seat. Even on dark night flights, there's always something outside the window. Watching the moon outside the window, I was soon about to drift off to sleep. However, I remembered that I had to make a full flight review for you guys. So without further ado, let's check out the seat. At your legs, there was a small pocket which was really the only storage area. The pocket was a decent size and accommodated a water bottle, but was useless for pretty much anything else, as the netted design meant things would just fall out. Above the only impractical storage area, there was a tray table which was a good design and was actually pretty sturdy. There was no vanity mirror though, which Singapore Airlines does provide. One thing I like is that Finnair does separate the literature pack from the seat pocket thus freeing up space. There was a USB port under the monitor, but there was no 3-pin socket. The Finnair A350's cabin is laid out in a 3x3x3 configuration. The 9 abreast configuration was way more comfortable and spacious compared to the 10 abreast configuration that, say, Emirates had on its Boeing 777 aircraft. The wider cabin allowed for much wider seats. The seats on the A350 are 18 inches wide. They are very comfortable indeed. There is however one big problem with Finnair's configuration on the A350. The seat pitch was only 30 to 31 inches in the regular seats. There was noticeably less legroom compared to other airlines like Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines and even Emirates. This is a big problem especially if you are above 180cm tall. The lack of legroom as well as the lack of storage areas it's really a shame as the rest of the seat was very comfortable and was well padded. It was very supportive and the adjustable headrest was excellent as well. Overall though, the seats on Finnair's A350s are above average. One thing to note is that Finnair does offer economy class with extra legroom. I'm not a big fan of this strategy though, as while those seats are more competitive with the seats on Asian airlines with their extra legroom, they have limited availability and of course, they are extra cost option. The touchscreen monitors on the A350 are large, bright and clear. Headphones were handed out and the quality was alright for economy class. 
There were plenty of movies that are frequently updated to keep you entertained. For children, there was a decent selection of games on offer, handy for keeping them entertained as well. I decided to have a go with Angry Birds later in the flight and found that it was not as easy as it seemed. One cool thing is that you could order optional food items from the system itself. That said, there was no NFC card reader for direct payment which Singapore Airlines does have on its new economy class seats on the 787-10 and A3AD. Another thing was that you couldn't purchase duty-free items through a system. The menu was supposed to be displayed on the screen close to meal times, but for some reason it wasn't working on this flight. Lastly, the final drawback of the system was that compared to Emirates, the audio choices were rather limited. Nitpicking aside though, the system was excellent and one of Finesse plus points. The A350 has two excellent external cameras, one on the tail, but this is unique, the fact that even if the gear is up, you can still use the down camera, that's thumbs up for that. The interactive route map was excellent as well, however, there were some caveats. The system does not display present time at the aircraft's location, and the altitude and airspeed information was only easily accessible within the cockpit view mode. That said, just like Cathay Pacific, you could preview points of interest of your destination and other countries through a system, which was a very nice feature. The service on most of my Finnair flights were excellent and on those flights the crew were really friendly and eager to please. Unfortunately on this flight, which actually turned out to be the last sector of all the 4 flights, the service was decent and perfectly acceptable but was nothing special. On this flight, there was a hot towel service before the meals were handed out. The towels were not the best quality and were more like tissues but was a nice touch overall, especially considering this is economy class. Another nice touch is that Finan does provide a bottle of water in your seat even before takeoff, meaning that you will not go thirsty during boarding and taxi. Overall though, service on Finan is still one of the best and one of Finan's plus points. The food overall was decent on Finan. The menu seemed interesting and had dishes of different cuisines. On my flight, there was no beef selection, but there was one dish that had pork in it. Not helped by the fact it was the only choice though. Snacks and pretzels were available at the galley, but you had to pay extra for many other food items, similar to other European airlines. Overall though, the food was decent without being anything special. Not relating to a crew, I do however have one big problem with the service. With a 12pm departure, many people actually wanted to go to sleep as soon as possible. The full meal however took around 1.5 hours to complete which is way too long. In my opinion, a light supper service could have been provided followed by a full dinner service before landing in Singapore due to the different time zones. Despite the fact that we were landing at nearly 6pm Singapore time, the pre-arrival meal was labelled as breakfast on the menu, which didn't really make sense. A pillow and a blanket was provided to each and every single passenger. Having said that, there were no amenity kits provided. No eye mask or earplugs were provided even upon request. The lavatories were kept pretty clean throughout the flight and they were a decent size. They even had mood lighting in there. Now in the A350's toilet, I changed into my, uh, my slippers. Another thing I like about the A350 is the advanced lighting system which is right up there with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. It can replicate sunrise, sunset, and even what Finland is famous for, the Northern Lights. 
check out this beautiful light show. So then, what is the Aviation Flyer's verdict? Well, overall, thin air felt like a mixed bag. While some areas were great, the main problem was that the seat and service schedules lagged behind international Asian and Gulf carriers, though thin air is definitely one of the best airlines in Europe. Overall, if you're above 6 foot, I reckon you should avoid thin air standard economy class due to a tight amount of space. For others, I reckon that Finnair is worthy for consideration, especially when compared with other European airlines flying to Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Singapore and the local time. Concludes another Finnair flight review. Now, if you like this video, please hit the like and the subscribe button. Do not forget to hit the bell icon and turn your notifications on so you are alerted of new videos. Do also check out the Finnair domestic economy class on the A320 family aircraft by clicking somewhere up there or when the video is posted. So, do turn your notifications on.